Let's provide a good good action or good formation here of this channel. So that's important. Uh, now we can go to this U.S. Uh, Swiss franc. This is a 15 minute again. Even though it's a head and shoulders, which indicates top, you can see in a 15 minute how much volatility you get. So in order to uh, prevent that, again, you can increase the length or you can also eliminate certain time periods like the 15 minute and the 30 and only focus on uh, the major movements. Okay, now, uh, as I was saying is that if you if you watch as we go through these patterns you'll start to notice that uh, you you can group certain indicators together in this advanced search that can give you a uh, a solid search or something that uh, really starts to make sense for example if you if we're looking for a bullish pattern and we're looking for a continuation. Say, for example, our daily chart shows us that we're in a bullish trend and we want to ratchet down to a smaller time period. We can set up these, these indicators to represent a uh, particular direction. Okay, then we can also have it search for stronger time periods and we can, we can set our clarity high as well as our uniformity high and we can create what I call like a like a um, uh, it's almost like a super super type indicator or something that where you have the best of the best going you have a direction and you have a high clarity and high uniformity so it's giving you a pattern that uh, clearly defines a strong uptrend in this particular case. So that's, that's the way I, I like to work with things, especially when I'm confident that a market is in a strong uptrend or a strong downtrend. Uh, looks like I had the wrong market pegged there, so I'll go back to this and I'll start it over. Uh, what I want to pick out is uh, my FX majors, and I want to go intraday, and I want to go to uh, direction. So I, if I think there's a shift going on in the marketplace, uh, for example, because of this, uh, uh, the way the currencies have been moving, then what I'd like to see is a, a, our bullish patterns emerging for me, or bullish patterns that have completed. And I want to also see high clarity, and I want to see high uniformity. So let me go back to that here a second. Yes, I believe we have a question coming up. All right, while this is searching, so again, this type of thinking is, this is when you come in with a slight bias, where you have a bias to the upside or you think the market's going to shift. You want to set up indicators, and you can see that the list has come down uh, fairly fairly short here, and you are, you're trying to look for uh, patterns that are suggesting uh, a bullish scenario um, and a continuation. And it looks like uh, pickings are pretty slim right now because uh, these markets are not in bullish trends. So may have jumped the gun here, but this is what, what you'll find out as you do these searches. Now, if you ran this search in a couple of days, say if the currency markets didn't, did turn bullish, then what would happen is you'll start to see that this side will populate pretty, pretty much, uh, pretty large. So... This just may be a, a bad timing right now to look for this type of search. But it just gives you an indication of what uh, you can do uh, when you're working with these searches. You can look at the relationships between completed and emerging patterns and give you a clue as to whether there's going to be a shift in sentiment. And, and my judgment here is saying that this market, these foreign majors are not ready to make turns yet, that there's not enough bullish patterns to indicate that the market is changing trend or if sentiment is changing. 
and that could cut down again or, or help you um, do some uh, more efficient searching. Now here's some patterns that just popped up this morning uh, in the uh, stock indices. This is a US uh, 2000. It's like a, a small cap CFD. And this one is going to show us uh, a high uniformity rating, or at least six or better. And it's a triangle pattern, so it's a non-trending pattern, which means that it broke, we're looking at a breakout of a, of, a, of a triangle. Okay, so this is what this is the kind of action we're looking at this morning. Uh, actually, a two-sided market, up and down. The Dow was also pointed down this morning, same type of pattern that took place before the market opened. So this was this is what happens, or this is the type of breakout that you get uh, at the period ending 8 a.m. Central Time, which means this is a reaction to a, a U.S. economic report. If you know through experience, you're going to get two-sided trade on economic reports. So this is where the technicals point towards volatility and the fundamentals come in, and that's what that's the kind of movement you get volatility so the technicals are saying look we've got compression here look for volatility the fundamental sometimes you get a two-sided report and that's why you get a two-sided market okay uh, and we have one more question coming up right now can you post that also this is poll number nine or poll question number three I should say All right, good. Good response and very good score. Okay, now I have uh, time now to start to look at uh, some of these questions. If you have any questions, just uh, send them in, and I'll go over as many as I can. Uh, basically, we're looking at uh, opening of the stock market right now, the U.S. market, so we could start to see some uh, alerts pop up. But uh, right now, uh, I've covered the most of the material, and in this, again, the whole key is just to wrap it up, is that you want to be able to create a chart that's aesthetically appealing, something that appeals to your personal preferences or the artistic side of your trade. Okay, we know that uh, through studies that trading tends to be uh, very visual, and you want to be able to see... Uh, things happening. And I know there's people out there that trade black boxes, but for the most part, you want to see a chart pattern, and you want to see a chart that looks like uh, like a triangle or a, or a rectangle or a channel, and you want to see it clearly. And the uniformity indicator alone can help you determine that. Now, coupled with clarity as well as pattern length, you can start to see patterns that look uh, more appealing to you. So the more you work with these these filters, the clearer the patterns will become, and I believe the more confident you'll have in trading uh, this particular uh, a particular pattern. Okay, I'll start going through some of these questions here. For the sell direction, how could I fix the take profit level and the stop loss level? Well, when the box pops up for a target zone. That's set. That's preset because it's based on a particular formula. Okay, so you can't change that. This is based on on a formula. And it could be the relationships between this top and and this bottom added to this breakout. Uh, but you're you can't control uh, where that level is. Just so you know. Also, you can use things for tools and like one tool would be if you went to power stats where you can go to power stats and you can see what expected movement is over different time periods and that could help you set a stop or set a target and that that could be important but uh, I believe your question asks if you want to fix it um, but that's box stays in there 
Okay, here's another question. In your autochartist.com, could you explain to me about the initial trend and how it helps you talk about uh, relations between complete and emerging patterns? Okay, what I've talked about before at previous webinars is, and I talked a little bit about today, is that when you're dealing with, uh, first of all, i got to know that the emerging pattern, or the initial trend, I should say, has to do with this move, this, this move at the beginning of the chart pattern. Okay, this is the chart pattern inside here, but this is the move going into it. If this is a strong move, okay, into it, into the beginning of this pattern, this is going to be highly rated, okay? And if you're getting a strong breakout that's in the direction of the initial trend, then the continuation is going to show, it's going to be a continuation, and it's going to show that it's up. A webinar I did the other night, people said, well, this is a downtrend, so this move should be a reversal. And I said, no, because the breakout refers to the breakout in the direction of the initial trend, which is right here. So initial trend is up, breakout is up, continuation. Initial trend was strong going into this top, and now the breakout is strong also. So that's how those two work together. Okay, that's, that's what you want to realize is what the initial trend is. And um, when, it, when you're dealing with emerging patterns, emerging patterns, depending on what you're looking at, if you're looking at an emerging channel up, which is a trending pattern, then your expectations is that this market's going to uh, continue in this channel. So you're looking to sell resistance by support. But the thing is, when you get an alert off of this pattern, you have to react fairly quickly. You have to trust that Autotardis has picked up that this is a uh, trending, uh, they're starting to trend down, okay, that the initial trend was down and that Autotardis is picking up that we've hit resistance and now we should continue, okay, continuation here you can see and that gray means that we're expecting it to be down because we don't know yet because it hasn't broken out, okay. And when you're dealing with triangles or non-trending patterns, uh, you tend to get a, a warning that this market is compressing and ready to break out. And now with completed patterns, it, it makes the move through either support or resistance. But the initial trend, the key is to watch, if you can, what the market was doing into the start of the pattern and how strong that was. So you could see that this was one uh, top and then one two breaks that wasn't very long so your initial trend is only rated four whereas you can get previous you can get other moves where this was fairly steep and fairly uh, large move so initial trend was strong so that's how those two work together all right let me get my next question here and uh, what will we see here where this question is? Okay, uh, can you talk more about, okay, I just did that. Um, how accurate are the view analysis and forecast prices? Which ones do you use for setting your stops and targets do you use daily? Uh, I've seen results that show about 70% accuracy of the, of the forecast zone getting hit. All right. When I use stops, I, I tend to calculate my stops based on the power stats that I just showed you using my uh, power stats. And the other thing is that if I'm going to trade, uh, I have to realize whether I'm trading momentum or trading a swing. So... I have different stops set depending on if I'm trading momentum. If I want to see, if I'm trading momentum, what I mean by that is a breakout like this. I want to see the breakout extend after my initial buy. If if it starts to linger along this breakout point, then I don't stick around long enough. 
if I'm trading a swing, that would mean I got in close to this market turning.